Um, so uh, today I feel very grateful and excited to have very special guest, Buck Angel, um, who I've wanted to talk to for a very long time, but of course, um, I mean, we're both busy, but. <laughs> and there's a lot going on. Very <laughs> You're very busy too, my friend, blocking everything. <laughs> getting kicked off of social media platforms takes up a long time. <laughs> right on, my friend. That means you are awesome when you get kicked <laughs> off of Twitter. <laughs> so here we are, and um, I, I, why don't you intro yourself for our audience? I bet, okay. I bet our audience knows who you are, but just in case someone does They might doesn't. not. You know, not a lot of people do know, and I'm not sure if you're a demographic of people do. So I, I'll, first, I want to really thank you for having me on and that we get to have a conversation finally. So that's really important to me and my activism. So my name is Buck Angel. I'm a female to male transsexual person, which means I was born female, biologically female, and I had what I call a sex change to become a man. I had chest surgery. I had no bottom surgery. So really in the world, I'm known sort of like as a man with a vagina. That was kind of like my thing. I started in pornography and created a platform there. And through that, I sort of gained a voice in the world about, you know, sort of like, what does it mean to be male or female? That's why me and you kind of connected, because it is a good question. What does it mean? And what, what are, so at this point in my life, I'm more of a human rights activist. And that's really my work now. Okay, cool. Yeah. And so one of the, the main reasons that I wanted to get in touch with you, I mean, you obviously have a really interesting history and an interesting story, but I've become very interested in talking to people who maybe I guess I wouldn't have encountered through my previous work, which was primarily focused on feminism. It's still focused mm. on feminism. But I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm really interested in talking to people that maybe have some different perspectives than me. And then, of course, finding common ground, but mm -hmm. sort of getting outside of the box. And, and I felt frustrated with the way our culture is going, which is that, you know, you can't talk to anybody who you disagree with or your, <laughs> your followers disagree with or uh -huh. your, your comrades disagree with. And if you do, then you are signing on to all their views and vice versa. So, you know, for yes. example, you talking to me would make you supposedly a transphobe because people call me a transphobe all the time, despite the yep. fact that I don't believe myself to be a transphobe. You're not a transphobe <laughs> because you're talking to me. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm not phobic. <laughs> you're not Trans people. <laughs> but um and I think that I mean you're I think that you sort of share that point of view is that true yes 100% that's why I'm talking to you because I believe we are all entitled to an opinion. Your opinion about something is might be, and some of it is different than mine, but that doesn't mean that we have to hate each other or feel like we're just never gonna commit. How do we build bridges? So really that you are so right, and that's why I'm here speaking to you, because I think you are very intelligent, and I think a lot of the things that you say are really important and we need to listen to it. Um, and when we don't listen to things, I think what that creates is a total space for never being able to make the world sort of just move together, if that makes sense, because we're always going to be like this. I'm right and you're wrong. I'm right. It, it, it's it's become so insane. I'm not the man. I'm the man who is no not fearful. I'm not fearful of my community, which I will say it tends to be a little bit uh, pushy on on some of their sort of uh, I say an agenda in a way where they won't let anybody else have an opinion about it. It doesn't mean any of us are right or wrong. It just means that we need to understand all of us have different opinions in the way we move through the world. So I think you and I agree on a lot of things. And so I think that's why we're sitting here today. Yeah, I think so too. And I mean, yeah. it happens in all sorts of different communities. It's not totally. just in trans activism. I no. mean, trans activism, obviously that is happening big time where you're sort of trying yeah. to challenge certain ideas. But I yeah. feel like that within the feminist community, you know, I'll feel nervous about having certain conversations or asking certain questions or talking mm -hmm. to certain people. I mean, obviously I push past that because it's really important to me, but mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that I don't worry about it. And I certainly am impacted. You know, people will criticize me or reject me or ostracize me because right. I've spoken to the wrong person and so on right. and so forth. 
happens. So it happens. I mean, it obviously happens on the left. I'm sure it happens. It happens to me all the time. I get called transphobic. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a trans person. <laughs> and I've actually been, and you know, here's the key to me. I'm 24 years into my transition. I didn't transition yesterday. And, and when I transitioned 24, I'm 57 years old. When I transitioned, there was no internet. There was no, any, no information, nothing. I had to do it literally blindfolded on some level. And I was a guinea pig in an experiment with both of my doctors. That said, my experience in transitioning is totally different than the, today's newer transitioning. And so because of that, I have different views on transition than a lot of the newer, younger generation. And so, you know, I butt heads with them a lot, but they will, if you don't believe what they're saying or agree with them, they will try to take you out. I cancel you. You can't cancel me, kids. It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, so, that's yeah, my really attitude. Cool. Right yeah, on. And like, they shouldn't nope. be canceling you. They should not be canceling you. You have an opinion, and you're allowed to have that opinion. And what you're saying is a real thing. And so I don't understand why we're not listening. We need to listen to you. The fear that biological or cisgender women are having is real. And I used to be a woman. How could I? I'm a fem. I really am a feminist, and I believe that we need to hear you and hear the women who, the the cisgender women that are saying these things. We're just cutting you out of the picture, like you're transphobic. You're not transphobic. Yeah, and I just think, I mean, there's all sorts of different experiences, and certainly, I'm sure there's all sorts of different experiences within people who identify as transgender or whatever, yes. and obviously. There's um, the issue of, you know, lots of lesbians that I know are speaking mm -hmm. about this issue because they're mm -hmm. concerned about mm -hmm. young lesbians being pushed to transition and mm -hmm. things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But I guess maybe, like, before we get super into all of that, okay. um, yeah. maybe, yeah. I mean, I, I wonder if you can talk to me a bit about, like, just your background, like where you grew sure. up, how you grew up, what yeah. your experiences were like as a as a young woman, and I think as mm -hmm. a, a lesbian, is that how you yep. identified them? Yep. Yeah. And I want to let you know before we move on that nothing offends me, okay. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> I'll tell you if it does, but don't block yourself from making sure that you're not using the right pronoun or blah, 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 blah. It's all good with me because I'm here to educate you and your listeners. I am not here to stop you from saying anything. I'm here to hopefully build a bridge between us and you. That's yeah. the reason I do what I do. So that said, yes, I was born female uh, 57 years ago in Los Angeles in the Valley here in San Fernando. I was a Valley girl. <laughs> and <laughs> totally did all the things that little, but I was a tomboy. I was completely, totally a tomboy. My, ra my parents raised me on some level as a boy. And so I had an awesome childhood. I did not have a bad childhood. I got to, you know, that was in the 60s and 70s. We didn't even talk about transgender. We barely talked about gay back then. So, you know, I just played like a little boy and everything was awesome for me. It wasn't until puberty, which is usually the story you're going to hear from a lot of trans people. Puberty messes us up because then I started growing boobs. You know, I look like a little boy and the next thing I'm growing boobs and then I get my period and then hell, hell broke loose. And I started using drugs and alcohol. I uh, attempted suicide. I used to be called what we call cutters and I would cut myself here, my face, and I just literally wanted to remove myself from this earth. And so uh, it wasn't until I got uh, lucky enough to be able to see a documentary in my late twenties where I saw a transsexual man. I saw a woman change into a man and no one ever told me that I could do that. And so it was just like, I, I looked everywhere. I didn't have the internet to use. I had nothing. I had to go to a bookstore and I found a thing that said, from male to female transgender resource guide. And from that, I figured out how to, I was the first going to my doctor. He called me a guinea pig because he didn't know how to work with female to male transsexuals. And then same with my chest surgery, same thing. Had no idea. I was the first on both. So that said, my, my introduction into becoming male was really difficult. I didn't have the tools kids have. They didn't have nothing. I had no support. Everybody, my friends, I was a lesbian. All the lesbian women were like, gross, we're, you're out of here. Like, it was horrible for me. I did it all alone. But here I stand today very strong because of that. So what year was that that you, or, I mean, oh God. Like, like it was probably a process. I know it doesn't happen oh, yeah. at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I wish, like, dump water in and now you're a man. Yeah, I wish. Yeah. 
Oh gosh. I mean, like I said, 24 years ago I started. And so okay. it's all, it's still a process. I mean, yeah. my beard just grew out in the last two years and like, you know, those kind of really masculine traits are really important to a guy like me. I live my life as a man. I do not live my life as a trans person. I am not, I be, I always wanted to be a man. I didn't want to be trans. I didn't want to be any of that. I wanted to actually have what we call the sex change, which is now, I guess, derogatory in the transgender world, the new transgender world. To call yourself a transsexual is considered derogatory. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And like, when did you, like, so when was it d d you started to feel like I'm supposed to be a boy or a man? Like, how old yeah. were you? I mean, really, I'll be honest with you, always. And that's why, you know, speaking to my parents now, about everything they're like you always were a boy it's like why we raised you as buck and you always it never was and imagine my parents are amazing they always felt that from me and so i can tell you that i always felt that way it wasn't until i became a young adult that my sexuality started to come into play and that's when i started liking girls but i was still a girl so the only thing i could do was identify as a butch lesbian which you know still wasn't who i was i had to live that sort of life as a as a butch lesbian, which is a very difficult space to be in back in the 80s. And, you know, people wanted to beat you up all the time. So it was yeah. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to excuse me. You can probably hear my dog whining in the background. I do. Can you hear her? <laughs> she has to pee. Insane. I just know she's... She, Go like, get she's her. Trying to, like, I'll be Go get her. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to get, like, under the covers and she can't get in. She's like, help me, help me. <laughs> like my little chihuahua. Oh, give her a little hand. She that's okay. I'm a dog man myself, so it's all good. Oh God, she, I swear to God, every single time I do one of these videos, she immediately like she'll be fine, and then as soon as I press record, she's like, "No, I need you." I need exactly. You right <laughs> Sounds oh, okay. like my girlfriend. Just kidding. <laughs> like, wait, I want your wait, attention. Actually, yeah. <laughs> change my mind. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so you say, so what kind of like, I mean, you experience homophobia, obviously, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Plus, I mean, <laughs> that's mm -hmm. still going on today. Of yes. Course. Yes. And you know, so what kinds of things did you experience? Like from whom were you? you yeah. Yeah, well, so so what I experienced mostly was homophobia because I was a very butch woman, right? So I, I mean, literally got beat up. I physically got beat up by people. I had men follow me in tr big trucks, you know, those kind of dudes and those big crazy monster trucks always seemed to follow me because I was a total, I mean, if you Google, we will see pictures of me from back in the day. I was also a fashion model, which is a whole weird other story. But that said, I, I, I was a butch girl with a, you know, butch haircut and I looked sort of like androgynous. And so they would follow me and I'd get out of my car and go into a shop and they would literally rip things out of my engine. So I couldn't start. I used to deal with stuff like that all the time being called dive. Across. I mean, just one thing after another. And when I transition, and so I started to transition to a man, I still got it. I got it from my own community. They called me a traitor because I was becoming a man. People didn't understand it 24 years ago. They just literally wanted to kill me. They wanted, they thought I was a freak. When I started my pornography work, I used to get death threats, con I have so many death threats. When I spoke at Yale University and some of the alumni sent me death threats if I showed like up. Like the students? No, the alumni. They said oh. if I show up to their school, they're going to... They're actually going to kill me and hang me from a tree and light me on fire. <laughs> okay. So the students were okay with you, but the alumni yes. didn't want you. There. Yes, exactly. Oh, okay, okay. Yep. Hmm. Weird. Um, and and so and like so when you started to transition, I, what did you do first? Like, what was the first? Step? So the so I ha I found, I got a therapist who's an amazing and she's still my very good friend today. But she saved my life really because I would go to all these therapists and say, you know, I feel like a man, and they would just say, well, you're a very male identified female, and I'm like, no, I actually feel like a man. I stopped saying it because they were not giving me any feedback other than that I'm a butch woman until I met this one woman. And one day she just said to me, you know, Buck, I believe you. And it was like, you know, it's a very emotional space for me to be in because it, I, she did save my life. Nobody had ever said that to me before. So it was like magic. And we didn't have the internet. I couldn't go right here and Google, you know, transition or none of that. I had to go to a bookstore and places and look for things. And I did that for like two months. And then I finally found this particular, uh, it was like a handmade book 
from from transsexual women and it was all the resources and so i called the doctor who was the hormone doctor doc uh, Dr. Lee, Lee, his name was, and he had been working with transgender women, men to women for over 30 years. And I said, I'm a, uh, a woman who wants to be a man. And he said, I've never done that before. You can come in, but I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be my guinea pig. He literally said that to me. You know, I didn't have a choice. And today here I sit being a guinea pig. And then the same thing happened. And then I went in that resource guide and I found the guy to do my chest and he had never done chest on a fat female to male before. And I was his first patient there too. And that was here in Los Angeles. Yeah. So uh, I, what was it like going on testosterone? Like, what did you feel in mm -hmm. terms of, cha I mean, obviously there's physical changes, but there's, mm -hmm. there's probably other changes also, right? Like, Oh God. <laughs> well, <laughs> number one, I lost my period, which I have to tell you, a man on his period is not cool. <laughs> so, you know, I, I feel you, my from lady friends out there who are having menstrual cramps. I feel you. I, I know it. I know it all. And it's horrifying. And it was like, that was the first thing I lost. And it was so amazing for me to lose that. I just felt like a new life. I felt a new life because I wanted to kill myself. All of, that was my mantra constantly. If it doesn't work out, I'll just kill myself. It was literally something I said to myself. I didn't know how I was going to look. Today, you can Google photos, right? You can see all the kids on Instagram. You can do None of that was available to me. So I was literally blind going into this thing. And I remember the first shot, which was literally like that much. <laughs> and I, I was like, my life is beginning. Even though it did nothing for me, I knew on some level that my life was about to begin. And so I have nothing but amazing. It saved my life. Testosterone saved my life. Mm -hmm. And like, so did you, I guess I'm, so... <laughs> I was watching, I've been watching all this old stuff with you, and I was watching this um, interview that you did with Joe Rogan in, like, 2013. Yeah, yeah. And you were saying, like, you were talking about, I was very curious about this, and this is something that might piss my audience off, but I'm still curious oh, about well. You were talking about, like, men and women think differently. Like, uh -huh. did you feel like it changed the way that you thought or, like, the way that you behaved or anything like that? Yeah, I hope this doesn't piss people off because, you know, this is my experience. And, I'm, again, like I said earlier, our opinions and our experiences are different. So, so whether it's going to piss you off or not, hear me, okay? Because I lived as a woman. I lived like you as a woman through the world. I know the bullshit I got, especially as a butch woman. People don't like women out there. It's real. And so I know that my eyes and my brain are the same. What, what I saw as my physical female body, that didn't change. My, my eyes and my brain are still that same brain. So just changing the physical outlook of my, and the way people actually physically see me changed everything for me. Not only that, it literally changed my thinking process. I feel so when I, and I don't know if that's an actual real thing. I can only say for myself. And I can say that I think this happened because I became comfortable with myself. So before I would react to things and be very shy, I could never do interviews. I mean, if you saw me before, I was a total mess. I always wore my baseball cap like this. I could never function. I was a, sh a super shy person. And now I'm like, you know, a public speaker and travel the world doing these things. And I can equate that only to because I'm comfortable with what you see. So that changed my, and on some level, I feel like it changed my brain because it gave me more of a calmer sense of being and a less anxiety ridden way of being, if that makes sense. And I'm not saying women are anxiety ridden. I'm saying that I feel that I don't rush to judgment. I felt a more emotional as a woman. And again, that's just how I felt. I felt more emotional. I feel less emotionally attached to my decisions, where when I was a woman, I felt more emotionally attached to my decisions. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, and I mean, like you said, I mean, I suppose that could just be sort of like coming into yourself and feeling more comfortable yes. with yourself, getting to know yourself better, things like that yes. also, right? Yeah, um, and also, you know, society plays a role. I was raised as a woman. I was not raised as a man, right? So yeah. for most of my life, I was, I think all men should be raised as women. I tell you what, it will change the world because I got more sensitivity training as a woman, whereas men don't get that sensitivity training. They get rah, 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 go, go, go. Your dick means everything, right? Where women are like much more in a space where we have to think of things. And I really think being raised as a woman made me a better man, for sure. Well, yeah, I mean, socialization for women is so much about being aware of those around you and, yes. and putting other people first. And you're supposed to kind of be conscious of like making people feel comfortable all the yes. time. And it's yeah. socialized in that way. Mm -hmm. um, 
Not at all. My life changed. I'm a, I'm a dude now. Can you imagine? You know. <laughs> I literally get anything I want pretty much. When I walk through the world, when I walk to the airport, when I get things, people just treat me differently. Don't think I don't notice that. I do notice it is why I am a feminist because I believe we are treated differently and that men do have more rights than women. It's I live it every day, every day. Are there any, I wonder if there's any specific experiences like that, I guess, surprised you about the way that you could move through the, like, I, I totally get what you mean around like, you yeah. know, male privilege people people use that word all the time but like specifically what does that mean maybe for people who don't understand like a man who is always you know presented as a man he might Uh. not be aware of how he's being treated differently than a woman like was there was there something specific that happened okay well i can just give you a ton of shit (laughs) yeah yeah, so let's just say we're out to dinner (laughs) i get the check (laughs) it's a real thing so there's that it's a real thing so let's just say we're walking down the street and we meet somebody, me and my girlfriend, okay, who happens to be a cisgender woman. That said, I'm the one who's always getting spoken to. It's a real thing. Like people just automatically move their eyes to men. If there's a man and a woman together, men, people, even if it's a woman, they always seem to direct their conversation or ask their questions or when things are happening, it always goes to me and not my girlfriend, which to me, that says everything that says that for some reason, we've been taught that men know how to do things better than women or the man is going to be able to answer this better. Right. I get into any place I want to go into now, whereas when I was a butch woman before, it was a much more difficult space. People yelled and screamed and this. And even when I walk through the gymnasium, which I go to gym all over the world, and I do go naked and I do not have a penis. I still have a vagina. I walk naked through that gym. (laughs) Dudes don't say a word to me. I think they think I have a small penis, by the way. So they're a little embarrassed. But that said, I have this privilege that I gave myself to walk the world naked, where most women would feel very uncomfortable, right? I don't know the women's locker room. Do women walk around naked so much? I can't remember. Yeah, they they do, do. they do. Like at the, I I swim like it. So at the pool, there's usually naked. Yeah, yeah. I just feel more privileged all around. I feel more privileged in the way people speak to me. I feel more privileged in the way I do business with my business associates. I feel like I get things faster. I feel like I can make stuff happen faster. And that just, again, might be my own experience, but living in the world as a woman and then as a man, I I can tell you that I've experienced both sides. Yeah, I guess, yeah. So, I mean, one of the things, I mean, I've always said, you know, when I'm talking about trans issues or whatever and people say you know like you're trying to stop people from living their lives and I'm like Mm -hmm. not I want people to live their lives in ways that make them feel good and comfortable Mm -hmm. and authentic I'm not trying to stop people from getting surgeries or going Mm -hmm. on hormones I think people should be more cautious about it than they are because I think it's taken a lot more lightly than it is and yep. people aren't always given all the information about, and I don't even think we know all the information about. We don't. Hormones, right? Yep, we don't. So, like, and I, I, I agree with you. I will agree with you on that. It's something that I do get into a lot with the trans community. I do believe that we are rushing into this. I, we have no information. I do a lot of that out in the world, if you know, like I do a series on YouTube called Trampa 101 because I'm a lot older than the majority of the people who are transitioning today. We don't even have mental health care anymore. These kids don't even need to see a therapist or a psychologist. They just say I'm trans and the doctor shoves a needle of testosterone. That's disgusting behavior. That's wrong. And go ahead and Google detransition. Watch, it's rapidly becoming something. And yeah. this is what I've been saying for over five years. You watch and see the mess that is going to happen. Just because a child says I'm a boy or a girl does not necessarily make that true. It, you know, luckily I did get that situation. But what about being a tomboy or about being a butch woman or being an effeminate man? Why are these things being sort of um, taken off the table? And now either you're trans or you're a woman or a man, right? Yeah. There's no variation anymore. And it is, you know, it's one thing for an adult to make a decision like that. I mean, adults yes. have the right to make decisions and have cosmetic right. surgery and do those kinds of things. But it's another thing to do that to a kid or let a kid do that. And it's, you know, ruining their bodies. For, you know, it's making them sterile. Yes. And it's uh, like, uh, you know, oh, my God. It I actually freaks me out. All the, yeah. Like, I mean, when I think about when I was a teenager, I was changing my mind about what I, want, <laughs> what I wanted to be when I grew up all the time. <laughs> But and surely for you know girls like like young lesbians like yes. you know I've talked to a lot of these women I'm not yes. a lesbian but I know a lot of women who've told me you know what it's like and you're it's 
Yes. You know, and and I talked to some of these detransitioners, and a lot mm-hmm. of it has to do with homophobia. You know, they're yep. growing up a lesbian in a world that's still homophobic and doesn't accept lesbians, yep. and now it's sort of cooler, like it's more trendy and cool to be a it trans is. man than to be a, a young lesbian. I know it's really actually frightening to me because you know we have this thing called the internet and social media, and I and I will and I say it all the time that kids are easily influenced who know like this stuff didn't exist when i was a kid maybe if it did we would have seen this but 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 we're not doing any studies we're not having any we are pushing surgeries on kids i mean how can we be how can we ethically do that you and how can you make an informed choice when you don't have the information how are parents going to help their kids when they don't know how to help their kids just think about the parents i feel more like sorry for the parents than necessarily the kid. The kid will figure it out, but the parents have to make these choices. They might be making the wrong choice. They might be ruining their child's life for the rest of their life. I mean, there's so many layers that we don't talk about. We're just saying, if you're trans, you're trans. And I would disagree with that. That's just not true. Mm -hmm. So when did you start kind of speaking out about what you were seeing happening in trans activism, I guess? Yeah, well, you know, I've always been a loud mouth since I started my pornography work over 20 years ago, because even my community back then was angry at me for doing porn and saying that I'm making the world think we're all freaks and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what part of man with a vagina are you missing? Like, I never said trans. So I've been fighting with my community pretty much or arguing or this headbutting because I'm a man of opinions and I'm a man who believes leaves and I'm entitled to my own opinion and my own, I'm entitled to my own life. Just because I'm a transsexual man doesn't mean that I have to agree with everybody in my community. I don't. Uh, so, on, so on that side, I think I've always kind of pushed back because I don't believe, and I don't have surgery. I do not have bottom surgery and I'll never get bottom surgery. And that does not not make me male for myself. The world can argue with me. The world can freak out. I don't really care. I live my life as a man. And so that said, the community gets upset at me because I talk to people like you, you know what I mean? Or I, or I talk to Blair White or I talk to, you know, people because I believe in building bridges and my story is important for people to get out. If I save one kid's life by being on your show or helping a parent hear me, then I did my job. That's all that matters to me. So people are always going to be angry at you when you're opinionated. And that's, you know that, I don't need to tell you that. So it's been forever. They just, because I'm very opinionated and I'm not fearful of the community. I'm not fearful to be canceled out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I guess, so what's, what's, um, what kind of things are you getting backlash for saying right now, like to the trans community? Oh, non-binary. For some reason, everyone thinks I'm anti-non-binary, which is hilarious because my girlfriend is non-binary. <laughs> that's, that's how ridiculous these people are. It's like, you know what? So really what I said is this, and I will make it clear here on your space is so people can understand. I said, there's a difference between somebody like myself who is a transsexual man who has gender dysphoria, which is a real actual thing. And I was dysphoric about myself and my gender and I changed it and I fixed it physically. I changed everything and now I live my life as a man. Is different than what's happening today, which is transgender umbrella with terms like non-binary, trans, femme, trans, all these different types of things that relate nothing to me. I'm an actual man who used to be a woman. I'm not transgender. So they get mad at me because they say I'm splitting up the community by saying that I'm different than them. And I don't understand why they would get mad at that when we are different and we are not the same. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, so I guess I wonder, I mean, is that like, might all be nitpicky but I assume you know so what I always say like I mean one I I take issue with the word cis for example I don't know what you think about that of course you do yeah of course no no it's I I think it was created in order to create a block to create a divide that's why I hate it yeah creating a divide with you you don't like it why am I calling you cisgender if you don't like it if you just want to be called a woman why aren't I just calling you a woman Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So that's one point is that it's like, well, you're imposing a label on me that I don't want. Yep. And, you know, if you're saying you don't want me imposing labels on you, why are you doing it back? Blah, blah, blah. blah, blah. But then it's all like, to me, I feel like, you know, especially feminists, right? Feminists uh-huh. have always pushed back against gender roles uh-huh. and probably have often felt like they don't relate to femininity, right? So right. if somebody's calling us cis when we're saying, well, we're female, but that doesn't mean we we like gender roles or we identify with femininity. And that's what that mm. term 
means. And so, um, I mean, I guess that, that, yeah, that's one of the issues I take with this, this new language around trans ideology or whatever you want to call it. I don't know what you think about that term. Well, it is. And, it, and on some level, I do think that, that there's an agenda and ideology. I do. There ha there is, it wouldn't be so powerful if it wasn't. Because back in the old days when we were just trannies, and now you can't even say that word, <laughs> it's like, so, that's why they hate me because I say tranny all the time. Oh, of course, right. <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to say that anymore. <laughs> oh, we can't say that. I'm like, I'm like, I actually earn that, <laughs> kids. <laughs> So you think I'm going to let a bunch of little 16 year old Snapchat kids fucking take me out? Are you kidding? It ain't going to happen. That that said, I don't like m these words that we are making up, right? Turf and this and that. You are only creating a bigger divide when you do it. And I say, I, I'm called, they call me names. I'm a true scum. A true scum is somebody who only, which is not true. A true scum is somebody who believes in only medical transitioning. I don't believe that. I believe that there are kids who are non-binary and, and trans fluid and whatever other things they're calling. That's not what I ever said. I said there's a difference between people like myself and them. I need to actually physically change to look and be a man in order to stay functioning in the world. I actually, I could never be, I would be dead right now. Honestly, Megan, I would be dead if I wasn't this guy. I would have killed myself. That said, these kids walk the world as, you know, trans femme people that don't necessarily look femme, female, or male, and they're perfectly okay with it. But what they don't understand is other people don't understand it. And so when they misgender you, you can't get mad because you might look like a woman, but you identify as a man. People see a woman. They're going to misgender you. So we've lost all semblance of some sort of like, like logic on some level, right? So we're expecting people to believe us all or understand our agenda. And if you don't, we're going to take you out. That's scary stuff to me. And that feels more like sort of some fascist regime. Yeah, the kind of um, the the forcing people to adopt a certain kind of language, forcing people to adopt beliefs that they don't believe, yeah. forcing people to, you know, uh, like understand or go along with your identity when it's like, you know, yeah. of course, like, if you see a boy, you see a boy. If you see a man, you see a man. And this, it's not fair for somebody to insist, you know, like this is obviously yeah. a very cliched example, but you know, mm -hmm. yeah, if a, if a male walks into a female change room, starts mm -hmm. getting undressed, then obviously mm -hmm. women are gonna feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But now it's, it's this thing around self-identification. So anyone right. who says they're a woman or vice versa has to mm -hmm. be accepted in that way. And there's no conversation to be had. And that's when this really all started blowing up around this. I mean, there's that's right. definitely, again, conversations to be had around the whole surgery issue. And yep. I, you know, don't necessarily have a hard and fast opinion about like the mm. surgery thing. But right mm. now, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking right. about self-identification and anyone is whatever they say they are. Exactly. And so, so that's dangerous behavior. And I will always tell you that. And it doesn't make me a turf. I'm trans people. It doesn't make me a turf. I'm looking at it in a bigger, and it's because I'm older. <laughs> and I'm much more mature than a bunch of these people that are trying to say you can you have to instill this idea. If all the men in the world said we don't we're not comfortable with Buck Angel being in this locker room, I probably would stop going into that locker room until I could actually make it comfortable for all of us. That's the kind of person I am. So that said, instead of going in when you are a when you are a male to female and you might not be presenting and you might not make any effort to present but you're just calling yourself female and that's okay you also need to be respectful and understanding that when you walk into spaces where there are women or cisgender or whatever you want to call them who are not comfortable we as transgender people need to start to have the conversation and be respectful around it or else we're never going to be able to integrate it the whole point of me transitioning was to integrate into the world and to be a part of the world i'm a successful person i'm, I'm a successful businessman i'm a successful like person in the world i'm totally sober 30 years i have my shit together why because i integrated myself back into the world i didn't just say i'm a tranny and fuck everybody I said, no, I'm a man and I want to be part of the world, even though I'm a man with a vagina. I literally integrated myself. So I don't understand why we can't have the conversation because logically it's a real conversation. When a woman doesn't want somebody who actually physically looks male in their space, we need to hear women and what they're saying. Done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, okay. it's, it's very weird that everyone like that women's comfort isn't taken into account. There's only it's one not. person's comfort that's where it's like this person yes. needs to feel comfortable. 
and these people don't matter. And it's like, well, you know, this is a woman's space. Like women have to feel comfortable in women's spaces. And yeah. supposedly that doesn't matter at all anymore. Which is so insane to me. How did we get to this space, my friend? That's the thing that I don't understand. There's like 25,000 women saying, we're not comfortable with this. And there's four trans women going, well, tough shit. We're coming in. How? It's such an unequal balance there, but I don't know how the four people have much more power than the 2,500,000. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't yeah. get it. And I don't yeah. know what, why this is, how this became such an off balance and why we are not listening to you. Why are yeah. we not listening to women's fear? Women have had fear their whole lives. And so that's because I think the trans women have a different experience than me. Right. They were raised as men. They have a different way of going. I mean, they, they have the total entitlement of men. I mean, that's a real totally. thing. So I don't know if that's passing over into the trans women world. And I don't want to speak for trans women. And I don't want to have anything to do with that situation. I'm just saying maybe that's it. So they're not hearing. But why are we not listening to cisgender women and their concerns? And that's the part we really need to, um, as transgender people, we need to listen. Because we want to be heard. Why can't they be heard? Right. And yeah, and I think that's a good point, actually, is that I think that, I mean, I don't know exactly why mm -hmm. either, but of course, it has occurred to me that, you know, male socialization yep. leads these, you know, now these people who now identify as trans women to not understand what it feels like to be a woman in the world and not to understand right. that fear and that vulnerability because they didn't grow up as women in this world. It's crazy. And so we're not even having that conversation because every time I have that conversation, oh my God, I'm a turf. And oh my God, Buck, you can't speak for trans women. It's why I just said that. I don't speak for trans women. I never have, but I have a lot of trans women friends who are actually logical like me and <laughs> would have a logical conversation with you and get it. Like if we don't understand, like we have to understand we're the new people in the world. It is up to us to educate you. And it is up to us to make sure that we can build bridges with you, not create divide. Because every time you, look, I also grew up in the gay woman's world. And I know people hate gay women. People hate gay people. It's a real thing. It's still a real thing. And I'm so, so dealing with that and bringing it over into the trans world, I understand the fights and I understand that people don't understand this. But what I've always done is to make a space for you to ask me so that me and you can try to figure out a way to move through the world together. It's right. I, I really, it's, a, it's very, I don't know if you see my frustration, but I'm frustrated with my community because we're not going to get anywhere. And all the work I've done in the 30 years of being an activist is getting taken out left and right. We're losing all kinds of rights in the United States because people don't like trans people here because we're doing crazy stuff that makes people go, wait a minute, what's happening here? Yeah. Well, I, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, it's yeah, it's not helping. The refusal to have not a conversation, helping. the refusal yes. to listen, just the kind of beating down and the silencing of any, yep. any alternate opinions or any questions or anything. I mean, yep. that's not a good tactic in terms of getting people <laughs> on board. <laughs> yeah, thank. And that's the thing that's so funny. It's like, hey, wait a minute. I'm a businessman. I'm a very successful businessman. You don't do that to people you want to do business with. <laughs> you take them out to dinner. You wine and dine them. You make them feel important. And then you can have the conversation if we did that with the cisgender world i get i have most of my friends in the world are cisgender because the cisgender world doesn't have a problem with me so how come they don't have a problem with me but they see there seems to be this rift right it's because i let myself be vulnerable i let myself integrate into them not feel scared about me but really having conversations and then once you have a conversation with me we're friends and then you never think about my transness again but my community doesn't seem to understand that we have to make the first move and we have to have our hands out in a way that's welcoming not in a way that's a fist right now we have a fist out mm -hmm. so i mean when did you notice all this changing like did was mm. there a time you know like it seems to me that it started really kind of blowing up i don't know maybe five years ago mm -hmm. ten years ago max like five i would say five ten yeah. Things were still kind of happening, not, not not nearly what's happening today. So in the last five years is when things exploded. And there's just, I mean, y you have no idea. Within the transgender community alone, the infighting is insane. It's insane. It's totally insane. It's why I removed myself from it. And I'm a human rights activist. I'm not a transgender activist. I cannot be part of that. It's not in my heart. Mm -hmm. they're, they're actually taking away a lot of 
what I've and people and my elders before me have built up to try to, you know, get the world to accept us and understand. And we just want to move forward. <laughs> I just want to move forward. I, now we've stepped 20 steps back because we're pushing mm-hmm. against people and forcing them to take on our agenda. Yeah. What do you think that, like, what do you think happened there? I don't know if you have any ideas. I've not been able to really put my finger on it. Yeah, it's a great question. And it's something that I have been thinking about a lot. And, I, you know, and the non-binary voice is very, very powerful over here in the States. I don't know or, or in Canada, but in the States, it's so powerful. And I don't know how it got that way. And I don't know why it got that way. Um, I, I don't have an answer for it. It's actually mind boggling for me because it's so powerful. The, the, those people are po- po- the ones who push against us are very powerful in this community, and I don't know why. But I, mark my words right here, my friends, it's not going to last forever, and people are already starting to get tired of it. Yeah, I think the yep. tide is turning. Also, I mean, yep. people are really not taking it anymore. This whole silencing, shutting down, no platforming, yep. the threats, all of that stuff. I mean, people are getting fed up with that and you know people nobody's going to respond well to that people want to be able to have conversations and they want to be able to debate people like free speech (laughs) exactly (laughs) there you go my friend free speech and that's what i said to them bitches if you want free speech you got to understand the other side gets to have it too i mean talk about entitled behavior they're just a bunch of entitled people they are they just don't even know they don't understand the fight to get to spaces that's the problem i think that they just feel they're entitled to have what they have and that's it and everyone's just got to get on board so no they aren't gonna and that's why because i've always pushed back against them and i've always and twit if you see my twitter man they try to take me out I just got on that block button and blocked all those little brats. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The kids, I know, the kids drive me crazy too because it's like when I get attacked, it's like, you know, like I'll get attacked by these mobs of like kids and I'm looking at their profiles. I'm like, are these people 12 years old? Like, I'm like, oh my God, you're going to lecture me? Like, you look like a child. <laughs> they are children, my like, friend. Like, oh, okay. You know it all. Tell me all about right it. Right on. Oh, That's what. I always go and look and see how many followers they have. And I'm like, you actually have 58 followers and you're trying to take yeah, me out. No, no, thank you. <laughs> it's, embar- it's actually embarrassing. It's embarrassing and wrong. And, you know, it's just, it makes me feel really sad about my community. You know, there's a lot of good people in this community. There's a lot of great trans people, a lot of people who are working to make life easier. There's kids out there who are me, who are going to, it's going to really make me cry because there are kids out there who are like me. I tried to kill myself. I, 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 the fact that I'm actually here today is a fucking miracle. And that's why I get mad at this situation because those kids will lose out and those kids will kill themselves because this newer generation thinks that everything is so fluid and that no, it is not. There are children out there who actually have gender identity disorder and don't feel comfortable and don't know how to do it and just want to become a man. But now their community is telling them, well, you don't have to be a man. You could just be this and that. And they're giving them mixed messages and not really letting them just be the person they want to be. And it's why I, I, I sit here and fight for those kids. Those are the kids. I don't need to put myself out here. I mean, I make products. I'm totally set. My life is amazing. I don't need to be in front of these crazy trans people. I could just be doing my stuff. But what I see is myself. I see one of those little kids seeing me. And when they see me, they see their future. And I didn't get to see my future. And now kids get to see that they can become successful men in the world and move on. And that's the reason why I do what I do. Yeah. And I mean, I think, so while I think, I think that there definitely are some people who suffer from gender dysphoria Mm -hmm. or body dysmorphia, whatever you want to call it. Uh And then of course, there's a ton of, of kids who like, you know, who are going to detransition, who just feel uncomfortable in their body, who Mm -hmm. don't know, maybe are lesbians, who are maybe gay. And I mean, that's, I think that's the most dangerous thing about all of that. That plus the, yes. the loss of women's spaces and women's rights from yes. you know, males who are identifying as women and being yes. transferred to women's prisons. And Oh, my God. I was just watching your prison one. It's fantastic. Oh, okay. Thank you for doing that. No, really. Yeah, you, that's- yeah, it's right on, my friend, because this is true. This, again, another space. Like, why can't we find a space in prison for transgender people? Yeah, Why can't we yeah. really? Seriously, I'm not even kidding. Imagine if I went to prison. Do you know where I would go? I would go to the women's prison because I have a vagina. They still base everything on genitals. 
And that's the, rea- so, you know, the reality of it is I'd rather go to women's prison <laughs> if I ever had to go. <laughs> but that said, I'm never going, but that said, you know, they base everything on genitals and the, the system is all messed up and we need to sort of fix it. But I, I heard that in, in, that was in Vancouver, right? The woman in your last she, She's from Ontario, but I'm in oh, Vancouver. Okay. So yeah, okay. I talked to her over Skype and she was, she was at home in Ontario, but uh-huh. um yeah, that was really scary. I didn't I didn't realize all of that. I knew that I knew oh, that man. it was happening and I knew that some sexual assaults has, had had happened, but I yep. hadn't realized the extent of that and I hadn't realized that it was happening in Canada and Canadian oh. prisons also. But but not here in the US. We still segregate. We still if you have a penis, you go to male prison. If you have a vagina, you go to women's prison. Yeah. So they're still basing it on our genitals. But we really need to understand that right now we cannot integrate ourselves into, you know, mainstream on on, on a level of incarceration. That's so dangerous on so many levels. And like it's already hard enough to be in prison. Can you imagine just like having this like person come in and you're not comfortable with and it feels uncomfortable for you? Yeah, there they are. So yeah. why are we not having that again? We can't. Why can't we have the conversation? I don't. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like we're not looking for solutions. And like to me, right. I feel like if it's like right. a solution could be like spaces for trans-identified people. Duh. Like why does it have to be <laughs> that you know a trans woman has to go into a woman's space? Like if that's yeah. going to endanger those women, and why yes. aren't those people fighting for spaces for trans people? Right. Like if that exactly. I mean that I don't know what other solution there could be. Either we base it solely on genitals and solely on what sex you're born, That's or right. we do that and then we have third spaces for people who don't feel comfortable in either of those spaces and identify as trans. And I don't understand why that's a problem. Right? Why is that a problem? We're making it safe for everyone. But I'm going to tell you, it's because the transgender agenda is not letting that happen. They want trans women in women's prison and they want trans men in men's prison. I disagree with that, especially because I don't have a penis. I will get raped constantly in yeah. men's prison. So don't no. put me in that space. And that is not okay. We are not advanced enough a civilization to just throw people like us into the pit. It will not work. We will be eaten up. So that said, why are we not being responsible for our own well-being? We're not. We're thinking we can just go into any space and just make sure everything is okay. That is illogical and and dangerous, not only for us, but for everybody on some level. And it's just, it, it's, <laughs> we're saying the same thing over and over. You know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because we agree. <laughs> we agree on everything. It's like, it, because it's illogical. Where, what happens to logic? There's no logic in anything. Yeah. So yeah. can I ask you why? I mean, I think this was a good decision, obviously. But can I ask you why you got the chest surgery and not the yeah. bottom surgery? Yeah, of course. Good? Yeah, no, thank you for that question. Um, so the chest surgery was available to me at the time. And so, again, I was the first person to do this surgery with my surgeon. And it was amazing. And it was life changing because my breasts were always my more dysphoric space for me because you could see them. I had to wrap, you know, strap them down and it's really uncomfortable. You know, back in the day we didn't have binders. I had to use duct tape, you know, like tape and then a ace bandage and my breasts weren't even that big but I was so mentally focused on them. So my dysphoric feelings were around my chest. So as soon as I got that, I just felt so relieved. But then I wanted to get a penis. It wasn't that I never wanted to get a penis. I always wanted to have a penis. That's what makes you a man. So back in the day, 20 years ago, the surgery didn't really exist and the surgery that existed. And again, this is my story. This is something I always have to say because somebody will pick something out and say I'm being bottom surgery dysphoric and I'm not. I'm speaking about me and my story and why I did not get bottom surgery. I did not do it because it wasn't advanced enough when the time was for me to try to get it. It was hardly even available. It was available for one doctor here in the US and a bunch of doctors in like Russia or something. So I just opted out of doing it which was a very difficult decision. You know, the man you see today was not the man 20 years ago. Who I, I was embarrassed about it. I didn't show my vagina. I didn't do anything. I was completely sex, sexless. I, and until I decided that I had to do, I had to masturbate one day because I just felt like if I didn't start to connect to my body, I was not going to be a happy person. And so through really sex and that I became okay with my body and I realized I didn't need to have surgery and it wasn't, I, you know, I still fight the world on whether or not I'm a man or not, but legally I am a man. I got my legal sex change. They issued me a brand new birth certificate in the United States. So I'm a male. I really am a male with a vagina. And so Mm -hmm. 
the really the reason was because it wasn't accessible for me and I could not get it. So I had to learn to live the way I am. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah, I feel like those surgeries are so harsh and I didn't feel like I yeah. feel bad for people who get them yeah. more than anything else because I think they're yeah. made promises that are probably yep. not going to actually come to fruition. Actually, like, I you're right. People, yeah. Like, I, I think that for a lot of those people, it means they can't enjoy sex ever again. You, uh, well, I'm going to tell you, I've been doing my research because I'm wondering why more bottom surgery guys aren't talking about it because they're not. So I found a guy who got bottom surgery and he hates it. And he's so pissed off. He can't have sex. He doesn't yeah. have sex. The second guy I found, it got gangrene or some stuff and it got infected. So they basically had to take it off. And now he has no vagina or penis and he has to use a colostomy bag at 19 for the rest oh, of his no. life. Yep. Terrible. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So it's not not real what you're saying. It's real. And it's really, you know, I think it's great if you can get the penis and I think it's great. But right now we're still not advanced enough. So I don't I'm not anti bottom surgery. What I am is anti bad surgery, which is a big difference. You know, it's like we need to get with the game. It's 2020. We just don't <laughs> we have no bottom surgery available really for us. Well, yeah. And I think on both ends of the as, as far as I know, you know, for for men who are transitioning and women who are transitioning, mm -hmm. I think that the, the genital surgery is really not cool. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's like, yeah. I mean, if yeah. people want to do it and it's going to make them feel better again, I'm not going to try to stop anyone, but nope. I really do feel like for a lot of those people, it means an end to enjoying sex. And I think sometimes it means that it's painful sex even. Well, if sex at all, and if, as you know, my work is really about sex and really, really connecting to our bodies sexually, because I believe that's really what made me comfortable in my body. And that said, the community tends to be very desexualizing. The trans community doesn't want to talk about sex or their genitals or any of that. So they're, on some level, they desexualize themselves, which is so dangerous and, and so wrong. So yeah, those surgeries are not as advanced. As, you know, the vagina surgery is pretty amazing. I, I saw some of the results and you can't, really couldn't tell, but that's an easier surgery because they just invert the penis, right? So it's yeah. not as, we have to actually put something on the outside and do all this crazy stuff and it's just not functioning enough. But you see how we put so much emphasis on genitals and that's, you know, part of my work again is, is my genitals don't make me. And what if I was a man who, you know, lost his penis due to cancer? Would I would I not be a man right now? Of course I would be. Right. So it's a difficult conversation for a lot of people. And I understand gender is very, very, gender is something that we all have such an attachment to because it's a real thing. Men and women exist. Biology is real. I believe in biological gender and where my, people in my community don't. They think it's socially constructed. And I disagree with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do too, of course. And, and I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I am pretty straightforward about what I think, which is that yep. there's males and there's females. And mm -hmm. then of course, some people don't identify with all the stereotypes attached to that, you know, uh -huh. masculinity and femininity. And some people are going to exper experience body dysmorphia or uh -huh. gender dysphoria, however you want to call it. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, and then, but, but yeah. And then again, I want people to feel comfortable with themselves and with their lives. I just don't, I don't agree with the insistence that you can just change biological sex and that everyone right. has to go along with it. And then that, you know, and, you know, really when I started talking about this and speaking out about it, it was because of the legislation and the policies, right. you know, the right. idea and the ideology is one thing, but then I'm seeing, mm -hmm. you know, laws being passed really mm -hmm. quickly without any public debate. And I was like, no, no, no. Like this is happening really fast. No yep. one's asking any questions. No one's listening to women. Yep. Um, we're not talking about it. And, and this seems like a dangerous thing to me. Isn't that crazy how fast laws were changed? I mean, really, even I as a transgender person who's also been in the LGBT community pretty much forever. And I always say this, you know, I'm also really in the gay community on some level. That said, gay rights are still lagging behind, but transgender rights just blew up. And like, literally, I've been fighting for gay rights forever. And like, literally, it took us forever to get married. That said, now we're like, I cannot believe how fast trans transgender rights pass. And my community yeah. doesn't see that because of the entitlement that they have. But I want to know, how come we're not having conversation before we pass laws or giving anybody an opportunity to say, no, I'm not comfortable with this. That's not that's not appropriate. We need to give everybody a voice in, the, in these laws. We, we just do. That's how society works. 
Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, so, I mean, I guess, I mean, we've already talked about this a bunch, but I wonder oh. what you suggest, like, to what's what's a solution? I mean, what are you suggesting yeah. we all kind of do to to work towards something that works for for everyone? What me and you are doing right now, coming together, having conversation, trying to see why you feel that way and why I feel this way, and then saying, well, you don't have to necessarily believe I'm a man, and I don't really care whether or not you do. All I want you to do is respect my choice of my change. And I know you do, Megan, because I, I know you wouldn't be talking to me. That said, you don't have to believe that I'm actually a man, because I'm not. I am not by a logically male. Jesus, I say it every day. People get so mad at me in our community. I am a biologically female person. <laughs> I'm an mm -hmm. ugly woman now, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but biologically, I am female. And I, you know, I will argue that to the end because it's a real thing. And I had a real sex change. And because I am, I think, on some level being logical with you, you respect me. Because of I'm course, saying, yes, course. I am. Yeah, yeah. We can't change facts. <laughs> we can't. You can't change facts. And gender is not socially constructed. What's socially constructed is the way we act, right? So me being a man now, I act a certain way because socially that's how men act. It's not my biology it has nothing to do with so social behavior at all. So that's where I think people are getting twisted. They think it's socially constructed when it's not. It's actual science and biology. So that said, I think the way to start to move forward is by having conversation, the hard conversation, like, mm -hmm. you know, why you feel uncomfortable with, with men who become women coming into female spaces. Why? You are entitled to have that opinion and until we can figure out a way to move forward through that how can we make it so that we can have spaces for transgender women because i do believe transgender women who are like me who transition who identify as women who make the effort to physically look like women should be allowed in women's spaces i really do believe that and i do believe that they can identify as lesbians and all that what i disagree with is people who are not making the effort to go along with socially constructed, whatever you want to call it, with this idea that you are a woman and you're going into a woman's space and it's really appropriate to make other people feel comfortable and understand how to move into these spaces. And I, that's just how, what I feel like. Yeah. And I mean, I'm not, I, I'm not sure I entirely disagree or entirely agree with you, but of course I mean, not. what I, what I do, I mean, I do, I do just wish that we were having more of these conversations and yeah. having on, honest conversations yeah. and that women were given space to talk about their concerns around, mm -hmm. you know, males who are identifying as trans or trans mm -hmm. women or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that we were given the space to try to look for solutions that work for everyone, because of course I want solutions that work for of everyone. Of course, like I want everyone to be respected and to feel yep. safe yep. and to not be discriminated against and not be harassed. Yes. Um, but the, the space isn't there to have those conversations. It's and not. Yeah. They're not willing to have the conversation. There's some angry trans people out there who are not, they demand that you accept them into this space. Can you imagine 20 years ago when I started going into men's bars here, gay men's bars, and I looked like a boy and they didn't know, but when I would be honest about who I was, maybe sexual stuff was gonna happen, the dudes would lose their shit. They would be like, what? No way, get out of here, you're a chick. I dealt with it early on and I would leave. Out of respect, I would leave those spaces, but I would keep coming back and trying to integrate myself into these spaces. So I've already dealt with all of that, but it's different for men. Men don't seem to be as, because it's a man's world. So that's what's what we're, what we're dealing with, that I think the trans women are not hearing you know, cisgender women's fears. They're just saying, we're women, deal with it. They're not hearing yeah. the fear of, you know, of this space that really, that, that, that we need to understand why cisgender women fear the space. And I know why you fear the space, but I don't understand why trans women aren't being, I think there's some trans women who are being um, respectful of you. I do. I think so I do too. think that. Oh, totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, like I think that there are, yeah, I mean, I, I know, um, I, I mean, they, I think, would identify as transsexual also. I don't think yes. they identify as no. female or even as trans women, but yeah. who understand why women would feel uncomfortable with them being in certain spaces. Yep. Not, 
like it's not even that many spaces. You know, there's not. very few spaces that are sex segregated. Like we're talking about like I don't know four or five spaces. <laughs> you're 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 actually so. right, my friend. You know, yeah. People say this. Th I say this all the time. I used to be a woman and I have a vagina. I will never go into a woman's space where I am not invited ever. I will never do that. It's because out of respect for women. I am not, I'm a man. I'm a I'm a scary looking dude. I'm not going to walk into a space and, and and demand that I'm allowed in there because I used to be a woman or I have a vagina. That is so irresponsible number 1 and it's actually really immature. It's like no, listen to what people are saying. They they we need to, uh, I feel like I'm repeating myself. We need to integrate ourselves in. We don't need to push ourselves in. When you push something, it breaks. When you integrate, it slides. Yeah, yeah, at, right on. I mean, yeah, I, to me, it's just, it's trying to understand people, trying to understand people's yep. experiences, listening to what they say, respecting yep. what they have to say. Yep. And that's not the same thing as bludgeoning somebody and, and demanding, like, it's not, listen to me and agree with me. It's like, yes. try to hear me, and then I can try <laughs> to hear you, and we'll see what we can come up with. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh my God. I mean, really, all we can do is laugh on some level, because it's, it's going to end. I guarantee you, anybody listening to this, things are going to start to change and come back around again, because it's not going to change this way. And I think uh people like Megan and myself who are willing to have this conversation will be you know instrumental in creating a space where we can start to listen and instead of just pushing we need to listen and that's with any group of people who are marginalized I mean we're mar we're like what 0.5 percent of the population do you know that yeah. we're we don't, we don't even exist if you think about it. Yet here we are with these loud voices. That's the part that it's really fascinating to me. How do we have such power and loud voices that are pushing against people and, and people are just sort of like melting and letting this happen instead of pushing back on some level and saying we want to have the conversation. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that, I really, really, really appreciate you talking to me. I really enjoyed Thank it. You. I'm so glad that we finally got to Thank meet you. and talk face to face. And I yeah. hope we can again someday for sure. Oh, no, we will. Well, I'd like yeah. to meet you at an event or something. We oh, will definitely. for sure. Oh, definitely. Totally. Yeah. yeah, we've got to, yeah. We've got to and keep yourself. doing that your thing. Good. Yeah, keep doing your thing, really. And keep putting yourself out there. I appreciate you. Even though we don't agree on, on all everything, I appreciate you because it's important. It gets me to think and it gets other people to think. And when you're you're doing something right, my friend, when people come at you, you're doing something right. Yeah, and I appreciate you too. I appreciate you, you know, standing up and asking questions and having difficult yep. conversations and staying yep. true to what you believe despite the backlash. And yeah, it would yeah. be great to do an event someday. That would be cool. So yeah, it'd be really cool. Okay, okay, right on, my friend. Thank, Thank you so you much. Thank you so for your much. Time. Take care. Okay.